Good morning. Today's lesson is 12.5. Mean as fair share and balance point. Our essential question, how does the mean represent a fair share and balance point? Let's investigate. On an archaeological dig, five students found one, five, seven, three, and four arrowheads. The students agreed to divide the arrowheads evenly. How many arrowheads should each student get? A. Use the counters to show how many arrowheads each of the five students found. One stack of counters for each student. Then B. Remove a counter from the tallest stack and move it to the shortest stack. Keep moving the counters from the taller stacks to the shorter stacks until each stack has the same height. Then in C, count the numbers of counters in each stack, so you'll have it even. The number of counters in each stack is the mean, or the average, of the data. The mean represents the number of arrowheads each student should get if the arrowheads are shared equally. There are five stacks of, so when you do this with actual counters, you would find that there are five stacks of four counters, so each student should get four arrowheads. Number one. Explain what is fair about a fair share of a group of items. So when items are shared fairly, each share is the same size and no person, group, or event is favored over the other. Number two, think smarter. How could you find the fair share of arrowheads using the total number of arrowheads and division? So you're gonna divide the total number of arrowheads, which was 20, by the number of students, which was five, to get the fair share. So 20 divided by five equals four. So they each get four. Use counters to find the means of the set of data. Number one, on the first day of school fundraiser, five students sell one, one, two, two, and four gift boxes of candy. So one person sold one, the next person sold one, the next person sold two, the next person sold two, and the last person sold four. So how many stacks? So make five stacks, because there's five students, right, of counters with the heights of one, one, two, two, and four. So you'd have one stack where you had one, one stack where you had one, one stack where you had two, another stack where you had two, and then one stack where you had four. Then rearrange all the counters so that the stacks, so that all five stacks have the same height. So I would take this one and put it here, this one and put it here. And if I did that, then all of my stacks would have two in each one. Oops, that was too many. So after re rearranging, every stack would have two counters. So the mean of this data is two. Make a dot plot for the data set and use it to check whether the given value is a balance point for the data set. So rows of friends have 1, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, and 12 pets at home. Rosanna says that the mean of the data is 3. Is Rosanna correct? So first let's plot it. You have one student that has 0. This student has 1. This student has 1. This student has two, this student has two, and then you have one student that has 12 pets. So the total distance from three for the data values is less than three is, is nine, and the total distance from three for the data values greater than three is also nine, so we're looking at the distance here. So the mean of three is the balance point. So Rosanna is correct. Three is the mean of the data. Problem solving applications. Let's go deeper. Four people go to lunch and the cost of their orders are $6, $9, $10, and $11. They want to split the bill evenly. Find each person's fair share and explain your work. Well, the fair share is going to be $9, and the way you get that is by the total cost of lunch, which we know is $36, because 11 plus 10 plus 9 plus 6 is $36. Then you're going to divide the $36 $1 bills into four equal groups, because you have 1, 2, 3, 4. And 36 divided by 4 
gives you the $9. So there's going to be $9 in each pile. Okay, so you're going to do your jam board together and think central. If you need me, I will be on the carpet and good luck.